Well, everything in America must be about racial politics now, so it's no surprise that CNN's Brian Stelter and Jim Acosta were both wildly speculating that Donald Trump doesn't really care about the flag and the national anthem and our civic symbols. Instead, he's just a racist. Watch. There is an unmistakable racial element to this story, and that's why I come down on the side of covering this and covering it big. The awkward subtext is a question we asked a few weeks ago on this program. Is President Trump a racist? Why is it that the president was seeming to go after African-American athletes over the weekend? He went after Colin Kaepernick at that rally in Alabama Friday night. Tom Brady did not make it here to the White House when the New England Patriots made it. There were no angry tweets from the president directed at Tom Brady uh, or other athletes. I don't think it's a stretch to say that is a bit of a dog whistle that is being played out there. The larger question, of course, is how did Jim Acosta wind up on television? But for the meantime, we're going to content ourselves with some of the smaller questions with Joe Concha, who writes about the media for The Hill and joins us tonight. Look, if you're a reporter, you probably ought not to be speculating about people's motives because aren't they fundamentally unknowable? Like, how could Jim Acosta know what can the president I, means? Can I answer osmosis on that? Because you could <laughs> look at all of President Trump's tweets on on this topic, and right. it's it's all out there. Race is not broached once. He's also verbally talked about this as well, and you don't see race broached anywhere. But since we have again reporters and pundits that last month were playing mental health officials when it comes to analyzing the president's sanity, now apparently we're reading minds as well as far as that goes. But but just to answer Mr. Acosta when he said why weren't there any angry tweets at Tom Brady uh, when he didn't show up at the White House for that celebration? Uh, Brady Brady's mother has cancer, and Tom wanted to spend time with her at that time. That's why he couldn't go, and that's why the president didn't respond, but Jim Acosta doesn't report that. Yeah, and by the way, I was at the Redskins game last night and watched the Raiders kneel for the national anthem, and a bunch of them were white, you know what I mean? And by the way, I think the league is overwhelmingly like 70% African-American players. Mm -hmm. So is any attack on the NFL a racial attack? Is that what they're saying? Well, there appears to be this tick with our political media that all the time we insert a racial component to stories that don't warrant them whatsoever. And let me give you another example with another story. Brian Fallon is a former uh, press secretary or a spokesperson for Hillary Clinton. He's right. now a political analyst for CNN. And he tweeted, and I asked your producers to put this up because I want to make this an educational experience. This is what Brian Fallon tweeted out today. Trump's racist neglect of Puerto Rico is threatening lives. It's time to start caring about the crisis there. So that's what we're dealing with now, that when a hurricane hits a U.S. territory, and we've responded, I think, pretty, pretty well, like we did with Harvey and Irma, it's racism that's working its way into this. But you were at that Redskins game last night. Uh, good thing you watch because not a lot of people did Tucker uh, that was the lowest rated week three NBC Sunday night telecast since 2006 so that's when you know that this isn't just well you know some people are boycotting there they really don't care no this is a real problem for the NFL right now if those are the numbers that we're seeing and I think this is correct that the, and it, it may be wrong but I think it's right that the teams with the most players protesting the national anthem and the flag were more likely to lose last night than to win Oh, that's an interesting, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't comment on that. I, I didn't research that. Uh, but I do know that the NFL, Tucker, is awfully hypocritical here when it comes to free speech. Now, you may remember last year that, that horrible situation in Dallas where a sniper took out five Dallas police yes, officers I remember and wounded well. several, right? The Dallas Cowboys wanted to wear a decal, a little one, on their helmets to honor the Dallas Police Department with the Dallas Police Department logo. And the NFL said, no, you can't do that. And when D'Angelo Williams, a running back, wanted to wear pink cleats for the entire season because he wanted to honor his mother because she died of breast cancer. The NFL said, no, 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 you can only do that when we're running our campaign in October. And when Avery Williamson wanted to wear 9-11 cleats that he made himself, red, white, and blue stars, very fashionable, uh, the NFL said, no, you can't honor 9-11 victims. So the NFL seems to be picking and choosing its spots sure. here in terms of what kind of free speech you could have and when. But overall, Tucker, I talked to a lot of people yesterday. I was out and about. I didn't put a microphone in their face, just conversations. The sentiment on the ground is that people People agree with the president on this one. They don't necessarily agree with the way he presented himself, because right. you know, because saying sons of bitches and so on. But uh, it, it completely contrasts what we saw in the media bubble, and not just cable news, but on ESPN sports media as well, which was universal condemnation of Trump. This is like the 2016 election. The conditions on the ground, right. and what people feel, is completely different than what people are thinking in New York and Washington. Well, that's ex that's always the case, and they yeah. don't they don't actually care what people outside New York and D.C. think. No, Joe, they only care you. what each other think. Yeah, with it's totally right. Trust yeah. me, I live here.